Hello, everyone. Welcome back to TV Book Club Evangelion. We are here this time to talk about episodes 17 and 18. I'm your host, David, and I'm joined here, as always, by Josh. As patrolled in the Dead Sea Scrolls, let's go to America. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, we, we start this week off uh, by going... Well, actually, we start this week off with an interrogation. Then we go to... Uh, America. Hold on one second. Okay. So. Can you, can you close the door? <laughs> <laughs> car noises. My dad's watching car YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, episode 17, um, the fourth to be qualified slash fourth child. So, yes, we finally, and not... Uh, so my Plex server crashed this last week, so I had to, I watched these first two, I watched these episodes um, the first time, like I got through them in the original uh, sub, but then I had, I couldn't like do it again, so yeah. I had to watch a bunch of these on Netflix now, and uh, Fourth Children is very weird and off, but like I don't like when they say Fourth Children. <laughs> Yes, because once again, I think we had this like earlier in like the series in which it just turns into plurality. Some literal translation instead of making something that sounds good. It is somebody that's like, I'm a purist for the text. I want it to be the purest text, which doesn't sound good half of the time. No, because it's it's Japanese handles plurality and stuff differently than the English language does. Some you have to localize it. You can't just translate. <laughs> Yeah, which is why I have a problem with, like, most of Netflix's, like, actual translation of stuff, it annoys me. Like, I used to watch Narco, like, I watched Narco with my partner, and it was one of those things that just, like, she was visibly disturbed of how annoyed I got with the translations of, she's like, what's the matter? I'm like, they're not, they're just doing approximations. They're not doing the actual, like, flow of these things, because things, it sounds similar, but it doesn't go along with, you know, it doesn't sound right. And the translation just goes an approximation of like, this is what we really mean. But it's like, you, you say different, like say the right words. It's Make weird. It sound of... Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. And it's weird too, because um, I, a lot of times I just have subtitles on, on Netflix. Cause you know, yes. you turn them on for some various reason, like you, you need to be quiet or whatever, and you don't want to miss anything. And then you just don't turn them off cause you're lazy. Um, yeah. But when watching. Until somebody gets annoyed and talks to you is like, can you turn the subtitles off? And I'm like, yeah. uh, I like them. Um, and then you'll notice, especially with watching anime, it's like, oh, when you dubbed this, you 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 did localize it, but you didn't localize the subtitles, so like they're different slightly. Yeah, it's very weird, and I don't know if there's just like yeah. a setting I need to toggle or what, but it's weird. Yeah, it's. I think it's all just depending on what you're looking for. Yeah. Anyway, so fourth child uh, opens with Masato being interrogated, not like, like brutal By gun, military. Like war. Yeah, not 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 like no. war interrogation. Just literally, they're talking to her, but it's very tensely. By uh, is is that uh, I just wrote Nerve Brass because you don't see who it is. I assume that it's just like the pe- the top people in Nerve because Gendo's there too. Uh. It is actually the Human Instrumentality Committee. Okay. Is that... Wait, so that's the thing that that Kaji works for. It's the... It's basically... Remember in the beginning there was, like, people with, like, there was the guy with the visor and they were all colored and everything? Oh, we see them in, like, the next episode or two, yeah. yeah I thought, so that's inner... not Sele? It is Sele, but it is basically the inner circle of Sele, which is, like, <sighs> these are the big guys. <sighs> So in terms of like a video game thing, these would be like the four bosses you have to go into their areas and go find them for. Okay, it's a, the, these are the uh, these are the area leaders. If we're talking about yeah. Crackdown, yes. Okay, I can I can translate that. So yes. uh, also they're interrogating Masato because the nerve base in America was completely destroyed, which I don't know if they've ever talked about that base before. Um, no. No. Yeah. No, yeah, they've never. I think they they talked about the German they talk about Germany and I think that that's they talk mostly about Japan but they've never like there's been hints that nerve is a global thing but this is like the first instance of there are nerve bases everywhere we're not but we exclusively had the vision of 
Nerf Japan. This is the headquarters anyway. Like this is the main yeah. one. They're all branches. So yeah. Uh, so because of that, um, America, who had the like contract to create Ava's three and four units, three and four. Uh, are sending Unit 3 to Nerve HQ because the base was destroyed. And basically, it wasn't just destroyed. Like, it just disappeared. Like, there was a massive explosion, and everything just vanished in an instant. So, yeah, like bad. It, it was very much a, what happened, and also, how did the Ava survive? Well, I thought the Ava di- didn't, I thought Unit 4 was destroyed. Yeah, but Unit Three was there. Oh, I didn't understand that. That makes more sense. Yeah. And now we now I know how the base was destroyed, yeah. which we find out next episode. It was the Ava. Spoiler. Um. There's also um. Did you remember the talk about the S two engine? Uh oh. So yeah, they talk about. The S2 engine, which is like, it's just like a massive power source, right? Like, yeah. Um, but they won't integrate it into the Avas because it would make them too dangerous and they're still not completely under control. Yeah. Um, so it would basically eliminate the need for like the power cable and the internal battery. Yeah. And they, they you know, they call them S2 engines like it's something they created, but we'll find out they didn't really. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we also find out that the dummy plug has Ray's, because uh, we heard about that before, it's got Ray's personality uh, implanted in it. Um, but it doesn't have, like, it, it's not like, it, it seems different than, say, like, the Magi, which have, like, a literal, like, copy of a mind in them, which is, this is, like, her, all of her data, but, like, not her mind part, right? Yeah. Because the dummy um, plug is just like an interface so that they can remotely control the Ava, not... Yeah. It's not a... It's not a democracy. It is more of a, like, oh, so we could save our pilots, technically, and save them from, like, being in harm's way when an angel is, like, a little bit too much. Yeah. So uh, we wouldn't have the Magma Diver episode go the way it does, or, like, some other episodes where an Ava just gets supremely destroyed. It would be a safer thing to do. Like... Let's go back to the Shadow Angel. Basically, it would be a, it would be a completely different process if it had like a dummy plug. Oh, and we find out that that's why Ray is in that tube, or at least yep. that's one of the reasons Ray is in that tube. Um. So, uh, Suzuhara and Shinji stop by Ray's apartment to drop off homework, and Shinji cleans up while we're there, and we get a very young teenager thing where Su- Toji's like, I won't do that. That's not a man's work. And she, she's like, Masato wouldn't like that. And he like reacts and he's like, well, I don't care. Manly man stuff. I don't do this. No cleaning. <laughs> Make me food. But Ray is appreciative and she like has to deal with the idea of thanking him because she never has done it. She's never said thank you to anyone. Hint, hint. Uh, no we al- one. We also find out that Tokyo 3's nerve base is finally, the construction's finally finished. Um, which is weird. Oh, I guess it's relevant later. Yeah. Um, so, and then I just wrote a note, because I keep going back and forth, and I, I feel like I just have to settle on yes, but he's also not awful, awful. Uh, is Kaji a creep? Yes. Yes. He's also not yes, like is. a monster, but he is a creep because he's hitting on the, yes. the one scientist lady. No, that's what he does. Yes, he, he hits he is, on everyone. He is raw charisma, but also a creep. Uh, this is, and then he tells Misato that the Marduk Institute does not exist. It's just nerve. They pick all the children. Uh, Shinji's school exists just to have all of the pilot candidates in one place. How did you feel about that reveal? Uh, it made sense. Like, it, especially, like, you think about, like, I think, I when I first heard it, I was like, oh, this 
oh this makes dumb sense now just like why are these kids here at all in this like crazy world like why are their kids here at all yeah because like at at one point like you know because a lot of them are like the kids the people working at nerve and now it's like wait are they the kids of the people working at Nerve? were their parents given jobs because they're candidates yeah but uh because otherwise if they were the children of the nerve people you could send them away like it's so dangerous send them away yeah but, uh, so yeah, now no. that it does make sense, and it, and uh, and it was also this, at this point I realized like the school part's such a small part of the show too. Like in in, in they're in, not get, but they're not being taught anything. Like remember, like we their just teacher keep, is like this. Yeah, he does every, the same speech every single day. Yeah, it's it's rough. <laughs> So I just meant more like if this was a different, if this was not, you know, um, if this was, if Evangelion was done by anyone else, that would be a much bigger part of the show. It would be all about the school and high school drama and stuff. Not Adam and mind horror and shit. Anyway, yeah. uh, we also find out that Kaji has a garden. That's his or, hobby. Do Is you he... know what he puts in that garden? vegetables and fruit yep he just has a garden where he hangs out and it's not a creep yeah (laughs) um there's not too much in this episode except that i think the audience knows more than the characters at the show for this episode of who's gonna get picked yeah yes because it's toji is the fourth child yep um they hint at it most of this episode, and then they blatantly... They don't actually explicitly come out and say it, but you can easily piece it together through context clues. Why Why are they showing Toji so often? Why? Why? Why not anybody else? Why do they... You know, why do they ask, well, then, oh, that's the fourth child, and then it cuts to uh, Toji Suzuhara, please come to the principal's office. Yeah. It's like, huh, but I wonder thing- what's going on, and then he disappears for a bit. <laughs> But I think the major thing that I think is the important part about it is that no one tells Shinji. Yes. I oh, and we also drill down that the class rep is super into Toji. Of course. Gonna make him food, because he's a man. Because he's a man. And then the episode ends with a dance remix to of Fly Me to the Moon. Which, I'm sad now... Since I don't have the original versions, I don't get those end themes anymore. Yeah. Because, uh, those... Why couldn't they (laughs) pay for the cover of this old song? You know what? Covers are cool. You know, I like the really soft covers of, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that they had for, um, Death's Face. Yes. The nursery rhyme sung low and slow is always creepy. Yes. Um, episode 18 is also one of my favorite episodes. Life and death decisions slash ambivalence. What does ambivalence mean, David? Uh, ambivalence towards life, maybe? Or hmm. human life? Hmm. Hmm. Ambivalence towards everything ambivalence, but your the goals? The state of having mixed feelings or contradictory Oh, you meant literally. I thought you meant thematically. No. I, I've seen this. <laughs> Come on. Uh, how did you like uh, Ava Unit 3 being transported in the skies? It was weird. Uh, also, couldn't they figure out a better way to fly it? Instead no. of, you know, being crucified and flying on helicopters. No. Also, into a storm. So, uh, Asuka is avoiding Misato. Because she's back together with Kaji, and Asuka hates that. Because she has a, a teenage crush on him. And then Misato has to leave to go to a test site to run tests on Unit 3, so Kaji's going to watch Shinji and Asuka. Yeah, and things are fine, like for like the activation but i think they're they're ever since like for me once you see the spark of electricity in the clouds and i'm like uh, 
where one's the one's the ball gonna drop here? Uh, yeah, it's just a big uh oh. Because we see Ray and Suzahara talk. Yeah. Where like he kind of helps her realize that she cares about Shinji because mm-hmm. she's not used to having feelings. And then, uh, yeah, the tests go wrong, horribly wrong. Gosh, could, couldn't have seen this. What happens to the test, David? Uh, so the instruments, all of a sudden, all of their readings switch to that of an angel, and then there's a massive explosion. Hmm. Hmm. Enough to destroy an American base somewhere? Yes. Uh, though uh, not as big because there are survivors. <laughs> yeah. This time. Uh, so um, Unit 3 is considered lost, and it's named the 13th Angel. And it's weird because, do you know, it looks so similar to Unit 1, except that dark color scheme. Yeah. It's creepy looking. I think, th- and it's creepier than a regular Ava, but it's like the peak, like, I think it reminds me of like a dark boy's fantasy, like, I want something edgier. <laughs> this is the edgiest Ava I could make. So Unit 1 is already so edgy. Yep. Especially when it opens its goddamn um, mouth. My favorite part is when it just starts walking. They see it over like the ridge, and it's just walking. And and Shinji is like, "Oh, it's an angel." And it's like, "Wait, that's not an angel." Yeah, yeah. So they send Shinji after it, and Asuka tries to tell him who's piloting it, but they cut her communications off. And Shinji I refuses. She got yeah. Or was that Ray? Sorry, I, I got it confused enough. Uh, I'm not sure, but it seemed like they would cut the communications. Because then Shinji also refuses to, he refuses to fight it because there's a human pilot in there. Yeah. So. And he, conti- and he continues because it's just one of those things like Shinji has not attacked the human. Like, it's in, like, I think it's the one thing that, like, most mech animes, like, some mech animes talked about, like, I think it was, like, Eureka 7 talked about, like, just realizing that you're not just killing robots, you're killing the people inside the robots. Yes. And a lot of anime and stuff like that don't really talk about that. Like, I don't think, like, certain Gundam series have talked about it, not Gundam Wing, for obvious reasons. Um, But it, usually that's an important point in, like, the anime. That usually does, especially for, like, young children characters, it usually, like, flips it to just be... This is when they realize what they're actually doing. Yes. And well, and this, this is the first time he's being asked to, you know, fight a person. An actual enemy combatant that's not a, like, faceless angel for the most part. Yeah. So he refuses, and uh, they, they activate the dummy plug. How did you... Did you have, like, a sense of what the dummy plug would do? No, but in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense. Because it's, since so yeah. w- the dummy the way they explain the dummy plug interface and we were just kind of talking about is like it it is not a pilot's mind it is not in control it's just basically interfacing it and it seemed like it makes the Ava activate on its own so it's just basically running off instinct. Um. So it just it doesn't just attack the unit three it like it it. It almost it, basically it massacres it. it let's, let's be yes, very honest. it massacres it. It's it. I was gonna say it reminds me of like when the computer takes over and like upgrade, and it's just like, oh, you're just going for the most like brutal, efficient strategy. Like but, you are, but destroying. it's not like yeah, but it's not efficient. It is more like kind of animalistic. Yes, in a way, like it's very much just like unhinged nature of oh, wait, this animal, like, a caged animal, like, being pushed to the brink, and it's like, well, I'm gonna turn my brain off and just let my body do what it needs to do. It mushes the head. Oh, and the river runs red. The the head explodes into gore, and it's yeah. really horrifying, and you see an eyeball and, and the lower part of the jaw floating in it. And it doesn't stop. No, it just keeps it, it's punching. It's one of those scenes, like, and isn't this, like, when happy music is playing while this is all happening? I don't remember. Or is this, like, another thing? It's it's either this or, like, in the rebuilds of, like, happy music is basically playing while this is going on. And so it's just, like, there's still, like, like basically, like, the foley of, like, 
body parts being ripped apart, but it's just to like a happy song while it's going on. Um, and then uh, Ava Unit One has something in its mouth, like a dog. And then he crushes the entry plug because he ripped it out of it. Yeah. Yeah, it rips the entry plug out of the Ava. What was in its mouth? The, the entry plug was in its mouth and then it just bites down. Like that was, I thought it had it in its hand. I swear it was in its mouth. I'm pretty sure it's in its hand. And he okay. crushes it in its hand. Same, same effect. But... Yeah. Uh, Faith says she watched that part. She says it was in its hand. Okay. I had to well, explain man. to her because I was just sitting there horrified and she's like, what? And I'm like, there's a person in there. And it's gone crazy and there's a person in there. Though the fact that Suzahara, because Suzahara does survive, like right after it crushes the entry plug, it powers down because um, yeah. it just keeps punching. It doesn't stop punching. Um. He's dead already. Please stop. And Misato's about to tell, and like as Misato's telling Shinji that it's Toji inside Unit Three, uh, they see him re- him being recovered from the entry plug, which I don't understand how, but I'm happy he didn't die. Uh, in the original manga, he's never heard or seen from again. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's weird that he survives, but I'm also just like, no, it's it's fine. How, it's how, okay. How far do the rebuilds cover? Like, what is what does three stop? Uh, three stops basically at the. It, it's weird. Um, I would say two ends. Let me see. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's no problem. I added this was a question you were not prepared for. Two ends about where and between like episode twenty and twenty one. Oh geez. Okay. Yeah. They go they they go a little bit quicker, but it's sort of like it still has the same feeling. They cut out a lot of the unnecessary stuff, I imagine. Yeah. Because a lot of those stories are fun, but they don't they're they're more no, setting the stage, and the, the point of the rebuilds is like you 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 have some familiar. I I talked about this at the beginning, like way back at the beginning. I tried to watch the rebuilds without having seen Evangelion, and it doesn't work. You need to know the show before you watch those. Eh, it I think it works mostly as a oh this is a mech anime like it's an it works as like a mech anime movie. Just like oh okay, there's something cool going on here. Also, this animation is awesome. Like it it they usually end in like a. They end like a comic book mostly, not like a comic book movie, but like a comic book of just like the last thread really just brings it together. Uh, but anyway, uh, that let's, should we move on to episode nineteen? Uh, well, we should call it for this this part, Josh. Yep. And then let yeah. us call it for this part. We will be back with episodes nineteen and twenty. I did really like seventeen and eighteen are very depressing, but really good. Oh. Oh, you, uh... <laughs> I know it's gonna so, get worse, okay? I have, I already only... have theories. More evolved it all, theories. It all comes down from here. Um, but, holy shit. I just feel bad for Toji. He doesn't want yeah, any of this. It's like, he didn't deserve this, but this is what happens to him. And this is sort of, like, the thing that it's... It's the mech... It's, it's the thing that I wish, like, I think more modern mech anime, like past like the 90s and stuff and like the early 2000s is just realized that like most of these animes were made for like oh hey it's it's war children of war this is war is bad but like they never really show like the actual things of war just like you're killing actual people and you're harming people and there are people involved on both sides that get hurt sometimes they would go into that like the better ones would go into that but it never goes in like Evangelion's not just about the horrors of war. It's about the horrors, not just, because usually when you talk about the horrors of war, you're talking about the front, like the actual battles themselves from the soldier's perspective. This is showing, like, the cruelty behind those decisions and stuff. More, um... It's about, it's it's a little bit more about the war machine of, like, everyone gets hurt in the war machine. It's like Apocalypse the people, Now. the buildings. What? Apocalypse Now. Yes. Yeah. So, 
It's we're, we're getting closer, Josh. We're so close. So close, yeah. So far away. So far away. All right. So yeah. So we'll be back with nineteen and twenty. Are, are you ready? Nineteen twenty. Let's let's roll this dice. <laughs>